guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to do a one year review video of my Jag XJL. Um, did a video when I first got it, just about the car, the reasons why I bought it and such like. Uh, if you haven't watched that, go and watch that. Um, so it's a 2010 Jaguar XJL X351 model. Um, so I've owned it just over a year now, done 20,000 miles in it, um, and yeah, just thought I'd give people a bit of an overview as to whether or not I'd recommend it, the issues I've had, um, and how much I like it basically. So, uh, let's say it's 3 litre twin turbo diesel, 275-ish brake, uh, oodles of torque. Very, very good on fuel, um, very good indeed. So, uh, I can report real world MPG figures are about as good as they uh, quote online. So, around town, you'll get about 40 ish, 35 to 40. Um, on a run, you'll get quite happily without really trying, you'll do sort of 52, 53 to the gallon. Um, and if you're really, really trying, um, and you're sat at 60 and on a very empty road, I have had as high as 62 miles to go out of it, which is very, very impressive uh, for this size of car. So, I so said I've done 20,000 miles, tyres, uh, I'll start off on tyres. Before I get into reliability and stuff, because you can't really count kind of tyres as reliability. So I've only just replaced the rear tyres. Uh, they were part worn when we bought the car, so half worn tyres have lasted 20,000 miles. I don't think that's really that bad. Um, put a pair of this is only the rear. Put a pair of uh, Uni Royal Rain Sport fives on. A uh, good mid-range tyre. Um, you know they're tyres on the rear are 275 wide uh, and the 20 inch rims so they're not cheap um, but if you, you don't really run these sort of cars on a budget but if you were on a budget I think you can pick up a, a budget Jinyu or something like that for in the realms of about 120 quid a tyre something like that maybe 150 fitted um, yeah, so put some brain sports on and very very happy with them um, one of the things that i noticed with the old slightly old hard michelin pilot sports where in the dry you don't struggle for grip in this um, but in the wet you'd sometimes come off around about the back end and step out um, so i just wanted to try and get a bit better control of that and the rain sports seem to have done wonderful things for that um, so I'm gonna be it's now due front tires as well um, so I'm gonna be putting rain sports on the front as well it's in a bit more difficult to find in the smaller 245 size um, but yeah I'm gonna be putting them on um, get the tracking done at the same time so then jumping into reliability, uh, overall I think for this type of car it's been very good, very good indeed. Um, so when I first bought it I had the timing belt uh, and water pump done on it, I can't really class that as reliability, that's just something that needs to do as part of the standard service. Um, so I had timing belt, water pump, aux belt and coolant flush and that all came to about 400 quid all in uh, which I thought was very reasonable uh, the parts were very readily available it was all, you know, all genuine stuff so it's all Um, is definitely a fault, uh, but I don't know how to fix it, and I just need to 
sometimes, really intermittently, when you indicate left, the all the lights will flash, so headlights, all that lot will flash with the indicators. Um, it's a problem within the indicator stalk itself. Um, some of the sweeping contacts get a bit dirty or something um, and can then wreak havoc with the camber system and all that stuff. So um, a replacement, good second-hand indicator stalk is about 75 quid um, or apparently you can take these apart and just give them a clean and put them back together so uh, I think I'm just going to try that and see if that fixes the problem and then if not I have to buy a second hand one which is fine 75 quid no bother um, brakes again not really a reliability thing um, when I got the car previous MOT had advisory for brakes, it then had front brakes, it then had um, advisory again on the MOT that I put it through shortly after getting it. Um, the discs were a bit on the limit of being worn basically. Uh, so I fitted some new discs and pads the other day, uh, good quality ones and they came in about 180 quid for front discs and pads which I thought was very reasonable indeed. Um, <clears throat> easy to fit, same as any other car. Uh, the only thing to bear in mind is you need a 9mm uh, Allen socket to undo the actual calipers. Um, but other than that, very easy to do uh, and has made a world of difference. One of those things that you don't realise quite how bad it's got until you change it. Um, so that's that's all done, no more brake judder or anything. So um, very happy with that. Um, and then I think really the last one is sort of self-inflicted, really. Well, it's definitely self-inflicted. So the fuel filler cat or fuel filler neck uh, has a special valve in it that stops you filling up with petrol. Um, don't worry, I didn't try and fill up with petrol. Um, but I was filling this up from a jerry can because I had 80 litres of diesel in the Discovery from when that blew up. Um, and so I've been putting that in this. Um, however, the jerry can's nozzle, being the size it is, has triggered the um, anti-petrol flap. Um, so I've got to reset that. There's a special tool that just lives on top of the battery. You can just poke in there and uh, basically, I think it just puts the flap back up. That just resets that. So that's an easy thing, no money, you know, dead easy it's just finding the time to do it um, and that's my own doing really so I can't really blame the car for that other than that the car has been great um, we've been on many family holidays um, we use it as our main car because it's so cheap to run um, space wise it's obviously very big which is great um, and it's great for fitting the kids in the back with lots of room their feet don't touch the back of the seat so you're not endlessly getting kicked in the back of the seat which is lovely um, the only thing I will say it does have a very large boot uh, in the realms of about 520 litres I believe um, but it's not the best shape uh, it can be quite tricky certainly if you know, you've got a family of four or two young kids you're going away with a big buggy, at least two suitcases, ten other bags of toys and everything else that kids end up travelling with. Um, it can get quite cramped when you're going away for a week, um, but we've uh, we've put stuff in the back, in between the seat between the kids and down by their feet. Um, one of the bonuses of this, obviously being the L, is um, it's. Um, you've got that extra foot, uh, leg space in the back so there is the space for that it doesn't encroach on the kids uh, the kids discomfort in any way um, so that's just one thing to note the boot opening isn't the biggest in the world either as most saloon cars aren't you know if you wanted a big one then you'd buy a hatchback um, but it is plenty big enough for a family of four of us to go away for a week and fit everything in including uh, kids bike and stuff like that 
so it's by no means small. Parking uh, is always a not not an issue. Uh, one thing I will say is narrower. Well, it certainly seems narrower than my old um, Audi A8. Uh, so it fits in. You fit in parking spaces better width-wise. You can always get the door open without too much difficulty. I always struggle with that with my A8. I don't know if it's to do with the size of the doors or what, but it seems a lot easier to get out of in parking spaces. Um, but it is always longer than the parking space. So you're either left overhang in the rear or overhang in the front. So you do have to select parking spaces a bit, uh, a bit specifically. I mean, being in a car like this, you try and tend to pick parking spaces a bit specifically anyway, so you're not near certain people in a supermarket car park that are just going to ram their doors into the side of your car. Um, so, yeah, that's just one thing to consider, but it's by no means a problem. Um, so into the interior and such like, um, so comfy on long drives, we've done, um, we've done sort of four, five, six hour drives in it and it's so comfortable. Uh, so heated and cooled seats all round um, and in the front we've got massaging seats as well. Massaging seats are a game changer, they are so nice. Um, the front drive, or the front seats are very very customizable um, so they've got inflatable bolsters and everything as well which I find really nice so they properly grip you when you want to when you want them to uh, when you put it down mode I think they inflate slightly as well and just grip grip you a bit more um, but they're all fully adjustable so one of the things I found with my um, A8 uh, is the seats were designed for fat people so you just slide around there's no grip in them at all comfy seats but you end up moving around all over the place uh, these are fantastic um, and all the um, all the lumbar support is great the let's say the heated seats are great they're the best heated seats I've ever felt they are incredibly warm there's three settings on hot three on cold um, they're so hot and they, they stay warm as well and they stay on that's one of my pet hates with uh, heated seats. Discovery does it, I've had several other cars that do it. They stay on for about five minutes and then they turn off. And yes, that may get rid of the initial coldness of leather seats, but I want seats that keep me warm. You know, I like sitting in a warm seat. Uh, I know it's not for everyone, um, but on the same, uh, same element as that, the cooled seats are fantastic. I think I've had cooled seats in one other car and they were a bit, you could never really tell when they were on. In this, you know, if it's a hot sweaty day and you put them on, you know they're on. They, they keep your back nice and cool, they keep your legs cool and they are, it's, it is something. I always thought it was a bit of a gimmick, um, but actually it is something I do use and it is really nice. Uh, heated steering wheel, again, really nice in the winter um, and does what it should. The entertainment system is the uh, Bowers and Wilkins uh, 15 speaker I think. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the bass you get from it is incredible, so crisp, so clear um, and it just works seamlessly. Uh, so phone connects to it, you've got Spotify on, plays Spotify, you can skip on the steering wheel on there, you know, all that lot. Um, and yeah, it just works really well. Uh, arguably the sound quality, certainly at higher volumes, I'd say is probably slightly better than an Audi Bose system, which is, you know, it's quite a big, uh, big commendation that. Um, the only thing to note with the infotainment system, and everyone will say this about the certainly the older J JLR stuff now, um, is it is a bit slow. But as long as you go into it knowing that, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you get used to it very quickly. You have to be confident with your presses on the screen. Um, 
so you know you have to you can't just sort of brush your finger past it um, you know you just have to get used to being a bit firmer with it um, and just being a bit patient certainly when it's cold it can take a little while to warm up um, but when it's when it's, it works very well um, and the one thing I like about it as well comparing it to the Audi MMI system and the iDrive uh, more against the MMI system of Audi's um, just the Audi one just looks a bit dated um, I've had newer Audis than this I've yeah, been in newer Audis than this and they just don't quite feel as modern this I mean you've got to remember this 12 year old car the technology in it is very good for its age um, but it doesn't look dated at all uh, it still looks nice and modern certainly with the digital cluster the, the digital cluster is just a game changer it's so nice look feels so fresh um, and clean it just yeah I love being able to unlock the car get in it and just seeing the two big Jag logos um, it's just yeah really really nice really like it um, Anything else in interior wise? No, I don't think so really. Um, memory seats are nice. We use them quite a lot because my wife and I both have different driving positions, so that's really handy. We do use that a lot. Um, yeah, other than the interior, the wood trim has grown on me. Uh, still not what I choose, but it has grown on me and I don't want to rip it out and change it for piano black now. So. That's, uh, that's one thing. Uh, sunroof is one thing I will mention. Uh, big common point on these. Um, the rails that they run on, well they don't actually run on them, but the, there's two rails underneath the, um, the sunroof. They, um, they corrode. Um, they can get to the point where they corrode through and cause problems. Uh, on this they've just got a little bit of surface rust. You can just sand it back and paint it and that will and just keep on top of it that's fine that's one thing to if you're going to buy one open the sunroof and just have a look make sure they haven't corroded through because if they grow through it's an expensive job to replace if you keep on top of trying to stop them corroding then uh, then it's all manageable and easy to do um, you've also got the very common you'll hear it everywhere um, the sunroof creek um, and when I was reading about it I sort of push it to one side you know I drive a rattly old mini I drive old Range Rovers and stuff like that I'm used to rattles and creeks and stuff like that that's fine that's not a problem but one thing I will say is it is quite annoying and it is more prominent uh, than a rattle, definitely. It is a definite creak. Um, it only tends to happen when you're going over uneven ground, just where the chassis flexes, and it's such a large pane of glass that obviously it doesn't flex. Um, and all it is is the rubbers around the seal for it. Um, so all we have to do is every six months or so, open the sunroof, put a little bit of Vaseline or some um, silicon around the a silicon spray not silicon, um, around the uh, the rubbers and it just basically stops them drying out uh, it tends to be worse in the summer when they you know when they're hot and they, they've dried out but it is you know something that if you're going to look at a car if you're going to look at one of these it's got a creaky sunroof and slight like corrosion on the uh, the rails it's something that easy money off basically you know you can sell you know you can have to do this to the summer or whatever um, but it's actually a very easy fix um, so don't be put off by it but just be aware of it um, that's all I'll say about that um, anything else servicing on it is very affordable um, so I do all the servicing on it myself
isn't going to do anything to its value. Um, whereas I, being in the trade, I can get very good price um, oil and, and filters and service equipment. Um, so I can service it for, um, I think it's, I think a, a Bosch fuel, uh, oil filter for it is in the realms of about 10 quid. Um, and a uh, eight litres of oil, I think comes in at about 70 quid, something along the lines of that. And then air filters about 15 quid or something for a man one. Um, or Bosch actually, I think is what I normally put it. Um, so all very, very affordable. Uh, and the only thing different to a normally normal family car uh, is the fact it takes about seven litres of oil rather than four or five. So it just means you have to buy two things of oil rather than one. Other than that, changing the oil is dead easy. Just take the uh, drain plug out the sump. Um, changing the oil filter, again, dead easy. Right on top of the engine. You just have a big socket as you do with most modern stuff now. It's all a cartridge filter. So really easy to do. Air filter's dead easy as it should be in every car. Um, and yeah, it's just easy to work on. Um, so far anyway that I've found. Um, yeah, so all that side of it is very easy and very DIYable, I'd say. Um, yeah, I think that's I mean that's probably um, there's probably not a huge amount more to say on it really. Plan is to keep it for quite a bit longer. I think um, we'll see. We'll see how things go with the discovery and that. But um, yeah, it's it's a nice, really nice car to drive. It's effortless to drive. It chomps up the miles. Um, and yeah, I love it. Uh, one thing I am going to be planning on doing probably the next seven or eight thousand miles is doing another gearbox service on it uh, it had a full mega flush um, at uh, 100,000 miles it's now 133 I think um, so come 140,000 miles I'm going to give it another uh, another gearbox service it's probably slightly overkill but these auto boxes are so particular uh, with their oil one, you know, you can sit in one traffic jam slightly too long and overheat the oil and that's it, the oil is dead uh, and then you start doing permanent damage to your gearbox and that's when you need replacement clutches in the gearbox and replacement torque converter and all that sort of stuff so it's, you know, it's not overly expensive to have the gearbox serviced uh, or even do it yourself again, it's one of those things that is easy to do it all yourself, definitely but uh, it needs doing. Uh, first service needs gearbox service needs to be done between 80 and 100,000 miles. If the gearbox hasn't been serviced at 100,000 100, miles, then expect to start seeing problems. Um, for instance, the Range Rover gearbox that's done 120,000 miles. That's now starting to show signs of issues. Um, yeah, they, they're not sealed for life. You know, they've got more moving components in them than most normal engines. So why people seem begrudged to spend the time and money on their upkeep, I don't know. Um, but really, it should be 80,000 miles service gearbox and then every 40,000 miles after that. 40 to 50,000 miles is fairly reasonable. Same with the engine, the service interval for this is 12,000 miles from Jack Land Rover. To me, that is absurd. Um, expecting oil, engine oil, and filter, in fact, to last 12,000 miles on a diesel. Certainly by now, you know, a 12 year old diesel that no matter how good it's been looked after will be leaking some diesel into the sump. It's inevitable, it will happen. Um, yeah, that's just absurd to 
um, to think that if you keep up at 12,000 miles it's going to last forever, it's just not. Um, so yeah, I my aim with this is about 8,000 miles, 8-9,000 8, miles. Um, I'd like to do it every 5 or 6, um, that's what I tend to do a lot of my higher mileage older cars at. I just haven't got the time with everything else at the moment. I just haven't got the time to do it every 5,000 miles. I'll just end up doing it every two or three months. So, um, I, in my head, I've decided 8,000 miles is a good compromise. Um, so, yeah, and it's relatively inexpensive and I can do it myself. So, um, yeah, so I think that covers everything. Uh, would I recommend buying one? Yes, definitely. Uh, they're only going to come down in price, they're only going to get cheaper, certainly, you know, they're very, very good on fuel, they're, you know, comparable to your run-of-the-mill Insignia or Mondeo or any of that lot. They are so much nicer to drive, I can't stress that enough, they're so much nicer to drive, they look the nuts. They're about the same price, and you've got 275 brake at your foot if you want it. What more could you ask for? Um, and massaging seats. So I'm going to leave it there. I feel as though I've waffled on enough. So if you could like the video, uh, give me any comments either about my video style, anything to improve. Hopefully the sound quality is a bit better as I'm testing this fetching uh, microphone that I'm now wearing. Hopefully we finally now have the sound, but only time will tell. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Go back and watch some other videos. I've got um, quite a few, quite a few review videos now about various cars I've owned. Um, I'm going to try and nab some other people's cars and do some reviews on their cars. Albeit they won't obviously be long-term ownership reviews like this. But um, yeah, it'd be nice just to give my opinion on some other people's cars. Wouldn't it? Because why not? Um, and got more discovery content coming up. Still pushing on really hard with that. Um, so, and hopefully sometime over winter there'll be more mini content as well, supercharged mini. So, stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.